for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. Go ahead and check me out on anthonysmoke.com. Definitely hit subscribe here on YouTube. As always, if you learn something, give a like, leave a comment, and make sure you ring that bell so you get notified when I drop a new video. Today, back in Tableau, going to be talking about highlight tables, well, conditional formatting of your highlight tables. And so I do have an existing video that talks about conditional formatting, um, but it's not of highlight tables. It's of making your own columns and conditional formatting. There's a little bit of a difference. So go check out that video. Um, how I got into this, the idea for this, I saw this webinar that the Flirlidge twins gave here recently. And I believe it was Ken. He opened my eyes to uh, this technique, and I researched, and I saw that Ryan Sleeper had some really excellent uh, blog posts on on highlight tables. So I figured, hey, let's uh, let's make let's make a vid. Let me put my own spin on it using some NBA data, and the way the data is clustered, you'll see uh, all the values are are kind of fairly close. So what do you do? Uh, in in that instance. So before we get into the highlight table, a lot of people like to ask, uh, where did you get the data from? Where did you get the data from, right? So let me bring over, let me show you uh, basketballreference.com and they have uh, player stats from from every every season. And so these are individual player stats, player totals. And I used the 2000-2001 uh, the all the way up to, you see I can keep moving, all the way up to 2004, 2005. I kind of combine those up into one table. And so you can, you know, get this table as a CSV, uh, get all five files and, and download them. But I didn't do that. So I used, a, I combined these into one big table using Power Query and Power BI. You can use the same exact technique in Excel using a uh, Power Query. Check out my video on importing data from the web with Power BI. You don't even need to download the CSV. You can simply pull what you need directly from the web. Shout out to uh, Spencer Bach for, for showing me that technique. So I felt like I need to show you where I got the data from because a lot of people will ask, well, where'd you get this data from? So it's season data, just five seasons combined up into one uh, big table. Okay, let's get into building this highlight table. I'm going to take the season, and let's drag that to columns. I'm going to take player, put that on rows, and I'm going to edit a filter here on the players, and we'll go top. I want the top 20 scorers from this era. So I get a little nostalgic for this from this era. Um, it's hard to believe that this was this was 20, uh, 20 years ago. This was a good time uh, in my life. So I have fond memories of the NBA around uh, this time. So top 20 uh, by sum of points. Let's say OK. And these are some of the stars, the top scorers from that era. Right. So um, <clears throat> the asterisks, I believe, indicates a Hall of Fame player. So Allen Iverson, Gary Payton, great defensive player there. Kevin Garnett, Kobe, rest in peace. Shaq. T Mac, Tim Duncan. So these are some of your your basically your high uh, scorers from from that era. So we have this uh, built out, and so what I can do now, let's uh, I can hide the season. We know we know it's season. Let's hide field labels. There we go. We're gonna hide that season. I'm gonna drag points. Let's take our points. Let's put that on text so we get um, right some some actual text there. And then I'm going to um, hold down control here and put put points on color so we get uh, get that coloring. And let's go square. And that's how I, I build out my highlight table. What I should do, let's sort the player here. We're going to sort. So what do we want to sort by? We want to sort by a field by our points. So let's go descending. And there we go. Uh, sort by field. Yeah, points. Sum of points. So there we go. We've got team. Oh, this is not exactly right. So I was like, oh, I don't think Jalen Rose was that high of a scorer. Good player, but not shouldn't be up there that high. What we need to do, if you're going to follow along with this example, I need to put team in here. And 
for the filtering, I need to get rid of total rows. So basically that's a row. If a player moved teams within the, uh, within the year, it puts the values on a total row. We don't, we don't want to double count that. So now that looks a lot better. TMAC, AI, Pierce, Kobe, those look like some scores I would expect to see up top here. So, so we have our highlight table. And we could actually change the color to diverging. That's probably a better way to go. Um, so this is uh, kind of your sequential, but we can do a diverging. Let's do a red, black, you know, red, blue, white, just to show you here, um, hit apply. And, you know, there you go. Your higher numbers here are in blue and your, your lower uh, points scored are in red. And so a lot of people would probably here, we can do this on the border. We could have like a, a white border or something like that. And a lot of people would probably stop here. I know I would typically stop here and say, you know, maybe I'd play with the colors to match whatever uh, uh, my dashboard was. A lot of people would stop here and say, hey, here's, here's my highlight table. But you know how in Excel we can do that conditional formatting. So we can take control of the, the segmentation and, and coloring process. Well, we can do that in Tableau as well. And so let me show you this formula. I just have a calculated field that I created. Uh, fairly easy to create a calculated field. And so let's take a look how we want to segment this. I'm saying if my sum of points is greater than 2,000, then put he's on fire. If the sum of points is less than or equal to 1,200, then ice cold, right? Ice cold is relative, uh, <laughs> you know, for, for NBA, for point score in the NBA. Um, otherwise, if they're kind of in the middle, let's go with he's heating up. So it's just a way to segment. And if you're familiar with the NBA Jam reference, go ahead and leave in the comment who you used to play with back in the day, if there's some, uh, some people that used to play NBA Jam back in the day. But anyway, he's on fire, ice cold, and he's heating up. That's how I want to segment uh, these, these values. And so what I can do, right, you would assume, let's just put that uh, on the color, and you'll see that um, I get a segmentation. But the problem goes when I try to size this up, it doesn't quite, right, above 2,000 should be red. And when I select on Kobe Bryant, I'm getting Tracy McGrady's numbers, 2065, from up here. What's going on is, as I try, you'll see the TMAC numbers um, segmentation is here. But as I try and expand it out, we get overlapping. So it doesn't really make it effective uh, when we try and uh, combine a discrete uh, segmentation with our continuous measure here and, and the coloring. So it looks like we're almost there, but not quite. And so this is the tip that I learned from, uh, from Ken and uh, Ryan. So if we go up here on the rows, I'm going to put in two double quotes. You'll see that we've got a line here, and that helps, right? Our problem's not all the way solved, but you see I'm not spilling over into the next column. I may spill over into the next row, or you see the outline there, but I'm not spilling over into the next column. And so if I put another double quote there, look at that. Um, everything kind of lines up. We, we line up our segmentation with uh, the, the, um, the, ac the actual measure, the point scored. So that's, that's really powerful, right? So, I mean, you can clean up your tool tips. I can go in here and just kind of get rid of these. We don't need that there. And again, I'm not going to get too fancy with formatting or anything like that just to get that out of there get that out of there. But now I can see everything kind of lines up. I have the segmentation. You can play with the colors. Just note that your borders, when you do this, your borders uh, coloring will not work from here. You're going to have to go up here and we'll go into formatting. And I believe that is on the, um, not shading, on here. And if I go to row divider, I can make this white. Um, actually, if I make it white, then I lose kind of this over here. I'm going to make it maybe the third. We can play around with it. You can see that it's starting to show up a little bit better here uh, on the side. So we'll do that. We'll get rid of this. We'll hide field labels for rows there. So I don't need that. But you can see, yeah, I can play around with the formatting. I can still see uh, what's going on here with the, the demarcation. 
Uh, I can do the same thing for the columns. Let's go down here. Let's use a third one as well. Again, like I said, you can you can play around with how, how you want it. But for the most part, this this looks really good. Now let's duplicate this. Right. Let's say I wanted to find my min and max values on here. This is the segmentation that I want. Everything above 2000 is getting segmented. Um, and then everything that's uh, below, what I say, 1200, is, we can see that easily as well. Pre-attentive attributes, using pre-attentive attributes. Nope, didn't want to do that. I'm going to duplicate this. And so let's say I wanted just to highlight only the min and max values. So again, picked up this calculated field from uh, from Ryan Sleeper using the window max function. So we're using window max functions here to find the max uh, sum of points. So if we find that, we say max. Um, if it's min, right, window, window min of sum of points, then we're going to say min, otherwise neither. So it's just another way to segment. Let's take that off the color. Let's go into min max and put that on color. And now you're saying, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> That's not quite what I expected. Well, what it's doing is it's giving me the min and max per player here. It's giving me the min and max moving in this direction. So what we can do, we can go in here and I have a video on table calculations. Please check that out. Got a video on table calculations. What we're going to do, oops, I want to, let's, let's edit the table calculation. So I can do one of two things here. I can say, I'm going to go in here to specific, and I'm going to say at the season and player level, give me uh, the min and max values. And you can see uh, that's what it does. Kobe Bryant, 2461 is the highest. And Chris Weber here, um, 430 points was the lowest. But if you want to understand what's going on here, right, these are, uh, this is the addressing. I could do the same thing. Uh, with compute using. So let's say I want a table across, right? Looking across, I, it would say, okay, what is my min and max looking across? If I look down, what is my min and max looking down, right? Going down here, what's the min and max? Moving over to the next one, what's the min and max, right? But if I combine them across, then down, then I get the min and max across the whole uh, table. So <clears throat> again, this is addressing, if I use the specific dimension, let's get rid of uh, these two quotes. You can think of the player in the season. Uh, what if I wanted the min and max per season, right? Then I would select uh, player. Now, that may not be intuitive, but if you think about it, think of uh, season, right, as a cross and player as down, right? Season is moving across and player is moving down. So if I say, give me the min and max um, moving across, this is what I get. If I say, give me the min and max moving down, that's what I get. So don't think of uh, player and season as the actual values. Think of them as a, dire uh, as a direction, uh, as your addressing. So again, I have a table calc video that helps clear that up, but you could end up with something like this giving you some options here for your highlight tables. So a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, you know, I have a new logo. Going to encourage you to pick up some merch, right? Everything I do on YouTube is free, no cost. Show some support for the channel. Pick up a coffee mug or a tea. Uh, this will guarantee if I ever see you at the Tableau Conference, I'm coming up to you and speaking to you, which you may or may not uh, want, <laughs> right? So uh, I'm definitely not in this for the money. The trade-off of time researching and filming these videos versus money is not a lucrative one. It's about me constantly wanting to skill myself up and wanting to skill up my subscribers uh, just like you uh, as well. So anything uh, you feel like picking up, Anything you feel like picking up is a show of appreciation me and the efforts I take to bring you and others like you free content. So uh, thanks for letting me uh, get that out. Uh, pick up some merch. Make sure you take this tip. Get out there. Do some great things with your data. Thanks for watching, everyone.